Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, we're dealing with a, a popular request, and that is, John, can you give us a tour of your toolbox? Yeah. Um, so, I've got a previous video that kind of shows what I've got this fabulous SGS toolbox, which I am very proud. And as you'll all know, I'm working on the garage to create hopefully what's a really space efficient home workshop. We've got a sort of compressor corner. We are going to have the ramp that lives underneath uh, Purdy. Um, I've got a winch to put into the ceiling. Um, and I've got a bit of racking over here that I keep on the top row, sort of cleaning things that I'm using at the moment. Row down is the lubricants and bits and pieces that I'm busy with. Below that, I've got old steel pans from the kitchen that are used as sort of drain trays and things to work in, chuck nuts and bolts in. Um, in this corner, I have my little sink, which does not go into the drain, so I can do whatever I want with it and um, do cleaning the parts, cleaning the me, all the rest of it. I've got my little charging uh, shelf. We have got USB sockets on the wall as well as three pin amusing British sockets. For those of you who don't live around here, I know they, they cause quite a titter because they're so big and uh, overcomplicated. Um, I've got my um, bench for doing sand moulding on and a bit of welding, that sort of thing, that's held up by a gas strut, um, which folds itself nice and neatly down to the wall. There he goes. And we've got some cupboards and bits and pieces up on this wall. So specialist fixings down on the floor, all my nuts and bolts. Uh, there's my forge furnace call it what you like, Devil Forge Furnace, very confusing. Um, and the cupboards at the back are basically uh, stock of things that I might need quite quickly. For instance, there's a box of assorted O-rings. But, you know, but for another time. So for now, let's have a little delve into what's in a toolbox. I've not tidied it up for you guys, as you will see. Um, and it's not the prettiest of things inside, but it's reasonably organized. I'm still finding my way with um, best locations for things. Um, but uh, I do like things to be in a such a position I can find them and use it to work on. So first thing about the box that's really good is I love the fact that it's got the big flat wooden worktop on it. You can do all sorts from, you know, trimming stuff if you want to do some vinyl work to chuck a piece of cardboard on there and work on something big and heavy and oily. You can clamp on a vice if you want. It's, it's great. And I can drag it across to the car and do work with it right next door to the car, which is fabulous. So, um, you know, there's my typical uh, stuff on the top. Some sweets to keep me going. A bottle of squash and a few bottles of water so I can play in here for many an hour. Um, on the outside, got two devices. This I mentioned in a previous video, probably my fav single favourite toy is my little uh, magnetic part dish which you can literally stick anywhere and chuck all your components in. And I've got a half decent work light. I really uh, like this one. You can pay a lot of money for these things. This, was, this is not expensive but it's got a magnet on the base, it's got a hook that I'm trying to work one-ended, not working. Hook that comes out and swivels, so you can, you can use it in all sorts of different ways. Um, and the actual torch element is A, it's LED, so um, quite light efficient and battery efficient. It's got a torch end, but when you click it again, it's got this sort of flood side. So, you know, it's quite a flexible tool, really quite chuffed with that. Um, not so big you can't use it, not so expensive you're worried about dropping it, all the rest of it. And I literally just leave him there so he's at hand and I can get on with using it. So, uh, which way to go? Well, I guess uh, as a theme, 
things get less organized as we go down. So let's start top left. Nothing in here is expensive, um, but here we go. This is what I'm calling the screwdriver drawer. And I have all sorts of bits and pieces in here. I enjoy different tools um, from, you know, old stuff I've had forever, Stanley screwdrivers for electrical stuff, to stuff I've only just recently got, nice um, hex drive clutch <clears throat> that you can hold on to this bit while it's spinning in a drill and you've got um, screwdriver bits in. Even got a little chuck there that can be attached to a screwdriver. Um, I've actually got separate, and I'll show you on a separate video, a little collection of screwdrivers that are, if I'm honest, not the most practical things, but I own them because they are so fabulous um, as examples of how, how far can you take the design of something as simple as a screwdriver. One of those screwdrivers is this one. I don't really need to use it that often. It's just a fabulous concept. You hold on to this black ring and it doesn't matter which way you turn the handle. The tip always turns clockwise or anti-clockwise depending on how you position things. Less of the tool pawn, more of the what we got. So I've got my array of screwdrivers in these nice clips. I'll put a link to a few of the clips and bits and pieces I've collected in the video below, in the description below. Less so the tools. Unless somebody particularly wants to know what something is, then uh, you know this isn't a, a website um, for selling tools or a channel that's here to sell tools. Um, I use quite a lot of um, bits rather than screwdrivers because I quite like having something like this in my pocket with three or four tips and I can basically work without too many tools whereas the individual screwdrivers yeah. less so it's less of an issue now I've got the big wheelie trolley but I do like the uh, bits quite a lot and over on the right hand side I have some precision screwdrivers Torx bits um, and some odds and sods and back there, weird and wonderful stuff that takes the same hex drive as a screwdriver. So a little socket there, for instance. So, this is the screwdriver drill. Then, we move along one. We come to the spanner drill. Um, again, I'm not into particularly expensive or exotic tools. I can appreciate them, but... Um, I don't need to have the very, very best in any way. So these are Premier, which I've had for years and years. Um, they are from Machine Mart, I believe, which is an outlet we get in the UK. I don't know if, where you are in the world if they have it. The negative of these is you can see they're polished and it's hard to read the numbers sometimes. Um, the positive of these, they're polished, <laughs> they look nice and they're really uh, nice to hold. There's no sharp edges anywhere on any of them. And um, it just means that, you know, the, that does have a function. The more polished a tool is, the less likely it is to fracture. There's no sharp edges, there's no um, scratches on them. So they're nice, they're not hugely expensive. And all of these are metric screwdrivers, uh, metric screwdrivers metric spanners that I use mostly. Um, at the top here, I've got a couple of spanners which say 23, but if you can see the heads, I've ground them for particular jobs, which maybe we'll look at another day, to make it thinner and a particular size. So they're, they're a couple of specials that I use. And at the top there is another set of basically what I've got here, but in an even cheaper um, brand. I can't even remember what these are. Let's have a quick look. What have we got? It is, uh, it's a mix. Just unbranded chrome vanadium 
mixed in with some half decent, like that one, um, Tor Q, which is basically if I need two of the same size, that's where that comes from. I've got another tub, which I don't keep in my toolbox, um, which has got loads of swapsies, if you like, all my spare leftover spanners, sockets, that are not in here. I've got an Imperial set. I don't need a lot of Imperial stuff. Um, as with most people in the UK or Europe, you know, we don't, we don't get to play too much on the Imperial scale unless we're using really old um, cars that we're preparing. Um, got the chain wrench for undoing uh, oil filters, etc. Uh, a couple of large or special spanners. C spanner for adjusting shock absorbers. And then down this side, what some people would call wrenches, but adjustables, grips, etc. Um, these are actually cycle spanners, but they are very, very useful on the odd occasion where you need to get into something very, very thin. An example being the nuts around the bases of windscreen wipers. Um, that is a brake line spanner. So it's like a ring spanner, but you can put it over a copper brake pipe and you've got almost a ring spanner so you don't round off your uh, unions. And we've got a couple of mole grips or vice grip, um, depending on what you want to call them. It was a bit of a relatively unique tool there. I like this one. It's called Jaws, literally. And over on the right hand side we have the pliers drawer. Again using this nice clip system. Um, just your general selection of pliers, side cuts, um, nail pullers, uh, needle nose, etc. Um, also got some scissors in there. Also got these which are Bowden cable cutters. So sorts of cable that you'd use for a throttle cable or a choke cable. They cut them and leave a really nice finish. If you ever tried cutting one with anything else, you'll know it just turns into a spiky, nasty mess. They're really good. Um, and I have a universal set of circlip pliers. So use this in conjunction with all manner of different tips. Just grab one. And using this plier and the pegs that are on it, you can choose to have opens when you squeeze or with the same tool turn it over snap that on there and there's an attaching piece you can put for that if you're going to use it a lot close with a squeeze so useful tool means you don't have to have lots and lots of different pliers you just have a lot of different heads and this one nifty universal tool also got one of my toy jaguars in there just in case i need to go brum, brum, brum. this one i think has got flute wheels that's what i like to think anyway Going down this side, I have an empty drawer for future developments. I have my cutting drawer, which has things like a set of Gilbo's, which is a classic brand of tin snip or shears, really good quality. Uh, I've also got some junky ones for doing less painstaking work. Everybody should have a hacksaw blade handle it stops you wrapping bits of rag around, going like that, <laughs> and then cutting yourself. Really useful little gadget. Uh, a rasp, a diamond file, um, Stanley knife, or packing knife, or box knives, um, a pair of scissors, cutlery. It's amazing how much use I get out of some cutlery. Whether it's spooning powder for powder coating, mixing stuff up, it, you know, old cutlery why not and on the left hand side a uh, selection of exacto knives 
scalpels, etc. with their accompanying blades. Um, so that's the cutting drawer. Down another one, we have kind of some instruments test kit, if you like. In there, we've got the kit for your air conditioning system, along with the bottle of gas. I've got a remote starter, so I can start the car from underneath the bonnet. I've got my basic OBD2 um, scanning tool. I've got a stick thermometer, useful for doing air conditioning, stuff like that. I've got non-contact thermometer, so I can check the temperature of anything on the engine. And I've also got in there a timing light and a colour tune kit, which enables you to see the colour of the spark inside your engine. And there should also be, yeah, there is a spark flash tester. Basically, how far can you get your spark to jump? You can get your plug leads to one of these, the other end to earth, and how far can you get the spark to jump? Useful to be just comparing things like swapping a coil. And the bottom is what I ironically call my safety drawer um, because as well as safety related things, it also contains chemicals. <laughs> um, but, you know, we all talk about it, but get yourself a first aid kit and stick it in your toolbox. It's a really good idea. There's nothing worse than rushing around in your garage with a gush thinking, oh, if I only had thought stick that somewhere you know where to find it in here i've got things like gloves i've got a very decent um, respirator i've got dust masks i've got high vis i've got safety specs all that sort of good stuff in one place where i know where to find it along with some chemicals glues um, things like acetone um, fire gums Etc. But I just want to keep out of the way of everybody else. Super glue is in there too. So the next drawer down in the middle is my socket and ratchet drawer. Um, again, nothing particularly exotic or expensive in here in terms of the tooling. Um, on the red racks, I have a range of Imperial sockets on the blue i have my metrics um, these little racks are actually very good they're worth a, a separate mention i will put a link to these in the uh, i think they're excellent so little plastic trays each one of them has a, a number which tells you what size socket is living in there um, there's two rows so you can have two different um, types of nine mil if you want like a deep nine mil and a shallow nine mil uh, there's also enough room at the back of most of the trays so you can put your extensions etc i just think they're really really neat again cheap so helps me find my sockets nice and quick um i have three four uh, different ratchets again nothing very exotic from a, a tiny little quarter up to um, rather battered half inch let's see the state of this thing I've had it many years and uh, what's this one US Pro Tool um, and that's SGS brand I think in the UK typically I just got this one by uh, eBay years and years ago but it still works well and I've got a spinny top on it which I, I really like and then you can do some hand tightening um, so that's in there uh, I've got a few um, specialist sockets um, some some really big stuff really deep stuff that I've got hold of over the years for very specific tasks hub nuts etc um, hi Ian the actual hub nut on YouTube. Um, 
And I've got these, these are nice. You grab something to go on there. So a lot of my extensions have ball ends. They're visually identified by having a knurl halfway down. But what it means is you put another extension or a socket on the end of them. And rather than being a fixed thing, if you just pull them out a touch, they are now basically universal joints. And that can help no end into getting little uh, nooks and crannies and you push them back and they become solids. So I've got one of those in a short and a long for each of the sizes, a different drive. And um, I find them particularly handy. There's the uh, very short half inch. Um, I don't even know if these are branded. Probably not, no. Again, didn't cost me a lot of money. Really good gadget to have around you. I have a, a, a range of socket driven um, Torx fittings and Allen key fittings as well. Uh, speed wrench, and at the back there I've got a torque wrench and a breaker bar, which is one of them things that you tend to buy because you really need it. You have an occasion where something just won't come undone. It's a hard thing to get out of here because I've got it jammed at the back. But <laughs> you only need to need it once for it to pay for itself time and time over. So I've got a two and a half foot long um, breaker bar with a half inch drive on the end, which means you know, generally undoing stuff is more possible. Add that to an impact driver and some penetrating oil and there's not a lot you're going to get stuck with. And that concludes the socket drawer. Um, so below the socket drawer, we have the electrical drawer, which some of you have seen on a previous video and kind of started this off. Um, I have a selection of the terminals that are commonly used. I'd love to say these are Halford standard sets. They're not, they're just the boxes, but some Halford stuff came in, um, which means I've got them all to hand. I use my shed to store all my stock of bits and pieces, but electrical things you want to just lay your hand straight on. Uh, cable ties, uh, we've got crocodile clips, we've got fuses of all the sizes that I'm not likely to need for my vehicles. Um, I've got pre-cut lengths of heat shrink tubing, so you can just slip it over joints and use a hairdryer to warm it up and it'll shrink down and leave a really neat finish. Bases for cable ties, self-adhesive backs, stick them onto a body panel or anything else you want, and you've got somewhere to put a cable tie through. Some half decent insulation tape, soldering iron, um, basic multimeter, nothing too clever, a little helping hands tool that I like. Um, this box, which again is caused some amusement, my truffles, uh, just contains test leads, wires, uh, cables that I've got different ends on, um, all the different sorts of connectors that you might have, so I can assemble little test leads to connect up different things. Just odds and sods really. Nowhere near as exciting as the original contents. I've got a really nice little, basically, continuity tester. Um, crop clip on one end, attach it to something. You can touch this onto what's supposed to be a positive, and hopefully it's going to light up that light saying it's positive. But sometimes you want to know if a wire is uh, conducting some current or not. So if this is on Earth, and I've got a wire, you can see there's a very fine needle there. You put your what there's better. Put your wire through that hook, let go of that, needle goes into the wire, makes contact with the copper core, and you can then tell whether it's positive compared to this. Very useful thing, gets you out of a bit of bother now and again. Um, about it years and years. Virax 270 Don't know if you can still get them. 
Um, various basically uh, current sensing screwdrivers, a uh, special tool for uh, UK telephone connectors, once in a blue moon and not for the car. Um, and three nice crimpers of different varieties. So I've got a ratcheting heavy crimper. So you put your cable in there and it ratchets up and you can really apply some good force with that. That's cool. Uh, a standard crimper of half decent construction just for stripping wire and crimping various bits and pieces down here. And can't hook little latch. These would have amused some of you so much because they're so overcomplicated, which is why I own them. Set of wire strippers. You put your wire in here up to the yellow stop, which you can set how far through it goes. And when you squeeze, that little finger comes down and grips hold of the wire. The blade comes down, pinches the wire. Then the blade pulls the insulation off and then they both open and return to normal. And it's deliciously OTT. So, and that's why I own it. Next we have what I call my clean drawer. Uh, I've got a box of stationery in, marker pens, pencils, all that sort of good stuff. Um, I keep some books in here that I've been using, things I'm keeping notes in. Um, my pair of safety glasses for I mainly use. Um, and I got these, if you haven't got these or well, something similar, I'm not saying this is the brand to have, um, then you should. They are wing protectors for your car. So made of vinyl, hang over the wing of your car. The back is cotton, the top, has a magnetic strip sewn in so you can hang that over the car and you don't scuff up the paintwork and knock it about while you're working on it. I've got two of those in my clean drawer and they live in here to remind me that they can only go back in here when they're perfectly clean because if they're dirty there's absolutely no point. I will put a link to those. I think they're such a good idea that I'm going to share where I've had those from you guys um yeah so that's about the size of it and if i've if i'm working in the garage and i need somewhere to put my phone or my keys i'll chuck it into the clean drawer and at the bottom we have the big stuff uh, i can't possibly go through all of this um quickly but the abbreviation is Turkish Delight tin contains no Turkish Delight, but everything con connected with threads and taps, removing taps, uh, sorry, removing taps, removing threaded bars, broken off studs, all that sort of stuff. The box underneath it contains my grease pump. Um, I've got things like um, piston ring compressors, bush removal tools, um, I've got a spring compressor in there, I've got various flavours of ball joint splitter from little ones like this up to a really big one in there. Um, I've got one of those which you may not have seen before, made by Girling. Um, they don't do this type of tool I don't think anymore, they tend to use like a plastic plier. If you're taking your brakes off, the flexi hoses, you can trap them between these two round bars, squeeze them, put the clamp over, tighten them up and pinch them off. And the idea is that you don't damage the pipe, but you do stop the uh, brake fluid from coming out. These days it tends to be like a red plastic plier if you use anything at all. Um, I've used them, they seem to work. I'm not absolutely convinced they don't cause any harm, but um, in a bind, it's a good tool to have. 
in the middle here, I've got everything to do with making up brake pipes. So we've got a decent pipe bender, capable of putting some nice smooth curves. I've got a little pipe cutting tool, and I've got the cheap and cheerful pipe layering kit. And in the blue box is basically a far more professional piece of kit that does the same job. Um, small scissor jack, it's useful for lifting things or holding things up under a car like gearboxes because it's really compact. A couple of rather large pullers. Uh, you can pull hubs off the back of your Jag or a steering wheel off a steering column or a crankshaft pulley off. Uh, I've also got my hairdryer, still in need of a respray, and uh, a glue gun that I use in conjunction with my body pulling kit, uh, which I've demonstrated on videos for the MP300. You can check them out if you like, but stuff like this, where essentially you glue a tab using glue, um, hot melt glue onto your bodywork, sounds scary, is actually straightforward. Um, put a tab with a dovetail on the end of it glued to your bodywork, set these feet on your bodywork and then pull. And so basically do body pulling without drilling in any holes in your car. Really effective and I'll demo that on my Jag because there is a tiny little dink. And now on this side we've got my Allen keys and crow's foot adapters. These sorts of things, so Allen keys in there as well. Um, never seen this sort of thing before. Put a ratchet drive in there, and you've got an open-ended spanner there, and as you're getting some really, really awkward places where only a crow's foot adapter can go. This is a special one for doing the uh, valve clearances on a Ford Pinto. Uh, that's the Pinto engine, not the Pinto car for our American friends. Um, we call a particular Ford engine the Pinto. And these are essentially the same, but treated almost like sockets. So you put an extension piece in here up to a ratchet and you can turn that. Um, and it basically where you run out of clearance, you might have to use crow's foot adapters. engineering draw. Believe it or not, I am one. I is one. <laughs> um, not something I, I practice commercially anymore, but um, in there's just some bits and pieces that I like to have still around me. Micrometers, depth gauges, vernier calipers, digital calipers, steel rules, etc, etc. Uh, a wide selection of mirrors. If you own a Jag, you very quickly work out that having a wide selection of different mirrors in different flavors is a really good idea. Uh, that one's got light on it, although it's got a dicky switch. There you go. Um, and even down to dentist mirror size means you can see some of the things you're meant to be able to see, but can't. Feeler gauges, etc., etc., and a spirit level that's really there for sentimental reasons because I built that as, as an apprentice many many years ago. This is a handy little gadget if you've never seen one before. Um, imagine I've got a screwdriver here and for whatever reason I really really want it to be magnetic for the next 10 minutes then you can pass it through this hole a few times and as if by magic you end up with a magnetic screwdriver. Um, you pass it through this hole a few times and as if by magic it's no longer a magnetic screwdriver very useful thing sometimes you, you find things that have been magnetized and shouldn't be and you can get rid or you really really need something to be magnetic quite quickly a little gadget like that can help you out this is my punches and trim tool drawer. I've also got a big set of Allen keys in there just because they won't fit in the other drawer. Hammers, punches of the variety that you might punch holes in leather or gaskets. 
um, etc. Or put eyelets in something. Um, also punches as in pin punches, nail punches, centre punches. The world of punches, the hollow nose punch there, um, is in that little box. Hammers to go with and my magnetic engineer stands for DTIs, etc. And then my Winoma uh, trim removal tools, which I love. Don't leave any marks, strong yet plastic. Um, really great for removing trim from almost anywhere in almost any car. And then the bottom drawer is not really a tool drawer at all. This is where I keep the things that I've recently got hold of, bought, acquired, Amazoned, eBayed, that I'm going to fit to the Jag or the D. T4 as it is now, the Jeep or the Navara. At the moment all the bits and pieces in here are for the Jag. So um, let's round this little video off with a bit of fun for you guys who are probably as sad as I am. So let's see who can be super clever and identify these parts. This one I'm not going to take out the bag for special reasons but you might struggle on. So, serrated plastic hose. There's a connector there. There's some heat insulation there. Um, genuine Jaguar part. Uh, I have another part. Might be a little easier. Have another part again for the XK8. This one's sort of self explanatory if you know anything about the car, or it will be now. And this one. I'll make some sort of prize for anybody who can give me, or the first person to give me, the actual name of the thing I'm about to show you and where it goes on an XK8. Insignificant little thing. I do have a couple of other things in the drawer. Some of them are just some O-rings. Uh, but I also have this. This is not part of the little guess what thing, just sharing. So this is a kit to replace the plastic thermostat tower in your XK8 with an aluminium one. So I have gaskets, O-rings, new lid. Good quality thermostat. an aluminium, not plastic, thermostat tower, um, which many of you will know, the plastic one does tend to degrade over time and eventually give up, start leaking or crack. So this is the alloy version, machined out to take O-rings. So quite clever. And the thermostat goes in that big hole. And then you've got that. Is the thermostat housing cover nicely serrated and that's going to replace the plastic parts in my car well i hope you enjoyed that little look through my toolbox um i've got lots of things to do still in the garage and i've certainly not showed you all of the bits and pieces that i do have in terms of tooling but that's the stuff where i keep in my toolbox for everyday use. Um, the garage continues to develop and we'll be looking after talking through some of the other bits and pieces in here real soon. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have then please subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, always welcome your comments and um, share with your friends, let everybody know. We're building a really nice community here, I'm learning stuff from you guys so um, it's 
really, really excellent. It's exceeded all my expectations. Um, so we'll see you again real soon on To The Garage.